Hey, um, Julie. Uh huh. Don't think about this too long, but okay. do you think that you could fall in love with a guy who wears a fanny pack? Yes or no? And don't think about it. Well, you See, know. See, already you're thinking about but it. But I, but, but you, I. You're disqualified. Do you want my hand? Let me try a different angle. A pair of identical twins ask for your hand in marriage. One of them wears a fanny pack and the other doesn't. Uh-huh. What do you, which which route do you go? Mm. What do they call it when someone gets fixated on a particular thing? Annoying. Look, I'm sorry. I have a dilemma because I need to carry my beeper, my cell phone, my little voicing, my electronic organizer, and mm, I just boy. need some way of transporting all this stuff that isn't. How about a, a mule? That's not the craziest idea. But uh, have you tried wearing it uh, on the back or on the sides or? I like to wear it sort of like a holster, mm-hmm. in fact, you know, mm-hmm. so that the phone rings, you know, boom. Oh, so out. just off to one side. Yeah, but I, I think it's not so much how you look in the fanny pack, it's how you feel about wearing a fanny pack, mm. just becoming comfortable being the kind of guy that wears a fanny pack. Yeah. And, I think, yeah. I am not that guy yet, but no. I hope to become that guy because it's so convenient. I think they're hideous. I do too. I'll give you some time to think about it. Do you want syrup on this? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Guess how, guess how much it costs this thing here, Ben. You know, Dad, I don't like the new you at all. You know, I wasn't thrilled yeah. with the old you. But uh, in in this thing here, Ben, I don't just have my cellular phone. I have my digital organizer. Yeah, you know, I, I have my voice recorder. Yeah, I have. Um, you haven't checked in a while, have you? <laughs> Ted, why are you wearing that, though, really? I, I think what this says is that I'm in touch. You're hooked up. I'm hooked up. I'm accessible. Right. I'm tuned in. Right, but, you know, I, who needs to get in touch with you? Well, that's the issue. That is the issue. That's why I asked. I'm responsible for the mental health of more than 30 people at this point, Ben. What is it that you do? I'm a mental health professional, well, That must be rewarding work. Well, I think that maybe you're going a little overboard. Like, why do you need to keep everything in one unit? Because all my electronic things are team players. So if I have my cell phone or not my digital organizer, which has the numbers in it, yeah. you know, my cell phone is, is rendered useless at that point. And without you, all these things wouldn't be. Yeah, I'm a key player in this mix. Uh, you're part of the team. That's right. Yeah. I'd like to think I'm the captain. Yeah. <laughs> of Team Loser. But anyway, try to guess how much this thing costs, and I'll give you a hint. It's 100% rawhide. Mm. Uh, I would say 50 bucks. Down. 49.99? Nope. Go down. Um, two bucks. It rhymes with date teen. You paid $15 for that? What happened to your mind? So you paid how much for that, Dad? I paid $18. Rawhide ain't cheap. Yeah. Would you say one nice thing about it, please? Fix your hair. <clears throat> Hi, uh, I'm, uh, I'm here to see, uh, the doctor. Okay. Excuse me? Got it. Right, I'm sorry. That's, we're still good. Should I just, uh, sit down? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Please don't smoke in here. He usually lets me smoke in the office. Oh, good. Could you please not smoke in here? I have great kids. I like my kids a lot, but they, uh, it's like, uh, you know, a rodeo clown car pulled up and 15 of them got out and they're running around. You can't catch them. You know, it's like there's monkeys on acid all over the house. They're just hanging from lamps and lights and the ceiling and you can't get them. Come down. Mm -hmm. And there's certain things kids just don't uh, understand the concept of. Like the phone is a completely foreign object to children. Sure. I don't know what age they figure it out at. Maybe it's when they start dating and they have to use the phone to contact other kids. But at this age, my kids just have no idea. It's always when you're on the phone that they want to talk to you. You know, you're on the phone, you're talking to some distant relative over in Killarney. It's probably $17 million a nanosecond for this phone call. And that's when they walk up and dad, 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 I'm on the phone. Oh, okay. Dad, 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 I'm on the phone. How many times do I have to explain this to you? Wait, are you going to grow up and be 35 years old at the office, running around going, boss, 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 what? Can I have a cookie? I mean, the main piece of advice I could give to people who are, you know, thinking of having mm-hmm. kids and uh, 
and I think this is a hard and fast rule, is you know what? Don't buy the toys that make the noise. That's the key thing, see? Sure. Because if you buy a toy that has a button on it that makes a noise, the kids are going to press that button over and over again. That's the whole game for them. It's like, ow, 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 ow. For hours at a time, they'll invite their other friends over. There'll be 15 kids waiting in line. Oh, that's cool. My turn. Ow, 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 ow. And I'll warn you, here's the worst toy that makes noise ever. Okay. The Darth Vader bank. I don't know if you've seen this toy, Doc. It's, it's huge. And here's the gig with the toy. He's a bank, okay? So the kids put the money in his mouth, and this is what you hear. Well, I'm your father, Luke. For 15 minutes at a time, okay? One coin, 15 minutes worth of noise, okay? I have kids lined up again, putting coin after coin after coin. I've had hours of... On the third day, the mechanism that makes the voice go off when the coin goes in breaks. Mm-hmm. So now the toy doesn't need money to go off. It just goes off randomly in the middle of the night, okay? So I find myself at age 40 in my underwear, creepy crawling to get to the bathroom, 4 o'clock in the morning, hoping that I won't walk too loudly and set off James Earl Jones's voice in my kid's bedroom. And it's always right when I get to the toilet seat and I raise the toilet seat up, that little click as it hits the top. That's when I hear... <laughs> Dennis, I'm on again. Come in here and turn me off. It's not right. I'm almost naked. I'm 40 standing, giving the finger to James Earl Jones in my kid's room. Is that right? Ben, I have a big favor to ask of you. I need you to call my office at exactly 11.35. And tell Laura that you need to talk to me that it's an emergency. That is so easy, and it's a shame. Okay. And I'm not going to participate. So let's... <laughs> ben, I ask so little of That you, is the irony. And I get less in return. So wait a minute. You want me to call Laura at exactly 11.35? And tell her it's an emergency. But that not that alarming? That wouldn't be right. It would be alarming if you got it right. But look, can we synchronize our watches? I have exactly 8.24. I have no watch. In that case, I'm going to take off my watch, and we'll synchronize our wrists. Okay. <laughs> I have a hairy wrist. <laughs> Me too. So call Laura. I better write this down. Call who? <sighs> call Laura. There's pen ink all over me! Well, anyway, I appreciate your help here, Ben. Why is it so important that I call at 11.35? Because at 11.35, I will be at the bank. Mm -hmm. When she will place that call which I will hear because the phone is in my fanny pack and turned on. So can I count on you this time? Definitely not. Hi, I'm here to see Dr. Katz. Could you take a seat, please? That's okay. I'd rather, I'd rather stand. I'd rather you sat. I can stand all day. I stand for 20 hours a day sometimes. I'd rather you didn't. Are you sure he's in there? Pretty sure. Have you heard any noise come out of that room in the last hour? Maybe. Want me to go check? No. Well, I could just run in for a second. No. Yeah, I'll be with you in one minute, okay? Uh, he's in there. He's in there. Great. So you're shopping, and, and tell me again what happened. I caught this guy who was uh, comparing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I walked over. I said, hey, you can't do that. He said, why not? I said, because yeah, that would be like, com forget it. I like to go to the bowling alley and uh, bring a little black marble with me and put it inside that machine that they use to polish the balls. Mm -hmm. You know, then just call the manager over. During the summer, I like to go to the beach and make sandcastles out of cement then just wait for kids to run by and kick them over. So your trip did not begin well. Yeah, I was sitting on the plane and uh, the stewardess comes running out of the cockpit. She said, the pilot just passed out. Can somebody fly the plane? Mm -hmm. Nobody else raised their hand, so I figured I'd take a shot at it, you know. Sure. It took me almost four hours just to get it off the runway. Hmm. Finally, the right wing of the plane catches on fire, so I'm panicking in the cockpit. I'm looking all around. I see this little button that says eject, so I hit that, and uh, this little cassette pops out. Laura, I'm just going to run out to the bank. All right. And I'm going to leave my cell phone on, so if anyone calls or there's any kind of emergency... And you have that number, right? 
You mean the number you've given me every day for the last two weeks? Yeah, and, and, and even if they're reluctant to say it's an emergency, believe me. Well, what qualifies as an emergency? Uh, if it rings more than three times, sir. I don't think I have the number. What? Can you give me the number? Yeah, the number's fine. Just kidding. Dr. Katz's office. Uh, Dr. Katz is home. <laughs> it's Ben. Laura. I know. Yeah. Uh, please note... Yes? ...that I called at 11.35. Okay. It is 11.35, right? Yep. Wait a minute, hold on a sec. Will you hold on? Yes. Okay, hold on. Yep, it's 11.35. <sighs> I'll make sure he gets the message. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, no offense, Doc, don't take this personally, but one of my problems with this whole therapy thing is I just think it's, uh, you know, it's it's crap. Why is that, Dennis? I mean, I, I, the way I was brought up, uh, you know, two men uh, sitting in a room face-to-face -face, uh, discussing things is uh, interrogation. That's, hmm. that's what that is. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm Irish, so we, we have our own way of dealing with feelings. So basically, we just keep it bottled up and... So you explode. That's mm -hmm. the way it works. You just keep it completely bottled up, and then one day you just snap, and you scream, and you beat up a cab driver, and then you go home and take a nap. That's basically how I operate. You know, it's, uh, you know, a, uh, a series of outbursts. You know, they maybe have an outburst, nap. Yeah. You know, venting, nap. Full-blown psychotic episode, nap. That's the way I look at it. My family's uh, fairly big by our standards. There's about 4,000 of us. It's just you go to Killarney, which is where we're from. There's 4,000 people who look just like me, and they're various sizes. Some are adults, some are old, some are young, and they're, you know, they're everything. They're cops, they're bartenders. It's, just, it's a sea of my face. Yeah. And um, I saw a book, actually, in, in the bookstore the other day called Irish Cuisine, and I laughed my ass off. It cost $75, big coffee table book, Irish Cuisine. You know what we're famous for cuisine-wise? Okay, putting everything in a pot and boiling it for 17 hours straight, Okay. That's not a cuisine. That's penance, Doc. That's what that is. Okay? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You know what? Cook everything in a pot and then suck it up through a straw. Because that's basically how we have to eat our food. Because it's so watery. The vegetables and everything just kind of piles together. And you just go, and you eat it through a straw. Here's breakfast. Thanks for dinner, Mark. Is that dessert? Thanks. So it's not so much about the heat. It's about the clothing. I don't like shorts anyways. I don't think people should wear shorts. I don't care. I don't think the legs should be exposed. I think men's hairy legs should be covered up with two or three pairs of long pants at a time. That's my, uh, that's me, you know? I see, like, those guys swimming in the Olympics, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Never in my family has anybody worn a bathing suit that size. We go to the beach, we go in giant shirts, long overcoats and pants. We sit down, we drink a beer, read part of the paper, smoke a butt, we go home. It's a day at the beach in the Leary family. Of course, that's kind of an Irish thing, too, I guess. It's like twice a year in Ireland, they look up and go, you know, the clouds break. The light comes through and they go, wow, there's that big yellow ball again. What is that thing? Hey, Dad. Ben? You're all strapped in again? You know, it makes you look thinner. Does it? Well, I think because I have it so tight now. It's well, actually, it's, well, like a, it's like a combination of fanny pack girdle. Right. You know, I'm sorry the thing with Laura didn't work out as well. But it just goes to show well, you that uh, none of those items you have really help you in any way. If this... It if just this, complicates everything. No, what, what happened yesterday was that there was human error involved. And I can even see the human that was involved in that error. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, I honestly don't. I'm not upset about all your uh, instruments of yeah. technology. I'm most upset about the way you carry them around. I think the it's world... It's going to wreak havoc on your life. Uh, different, you think it's going to make it easier, very... but it... Eh, sh listen to me. You put it on for one second. <laughs> no, Dad, I'm not, I'm not trying yours on. No, just... Just tell me how you feel no, wearing it. It's not it. hygienic. Maybe you're the kind of guy that's comfortable wearing it. Just try it on for one minute, Ben. Oh, all right. And I'll call you. Turn, let me turn on the phone. Yeah. I can't get this strapped on, Dad. And I'll put this back in the fanny pack. I'll open the antenna just a little bit. This and baby ain't an XXXL. And then I'm going to call you. you you're going to experience a feeling that you've never felt before. Oh, Dad, you're freaking me out. Yeah. All right. What do you hook it around the back here? Any way you want. Any way you feel comfortable wearing it. Okay. Is around the thigh okay? I guess. That's the only way this thing's going to fit. I think that's fit. how they used to wear these things in uh, Sherwood Forest around right. the thigh. They had arrows in them. Okay, so then now so, the, the phone is in the fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think it's ringing. So, I don't you know, enough. just unzip the... Uh... 
I don't hear nothing. You don't hear it ringing? I hear it ringing. Well, that's in the fanny pack, the phone. You've got to take it out of the fanny pack. And, oh, uh, and, and zipper stuck. <laughs> well, no, no, it zips on the other side. Is that a zipper? Can I just rip this thing open? Here we go. Hello? Ben? Hello? Hello? Ben? Dad? Yeah. See, now, tell me that isn't the best. Hello? Ben? Hello? Hello? Yes, it's Ben. Dad? Now, tell me this isn't the coolest thing in the world. This is not cool. Pretend that I was at the office and that you had locked yourself in the bathroom like you did last week. You know what? To be honest with you? Yeah. I, we didn't need the fanny pack for that. I know, but suppose I, I don't always remember to bring my phone with me. Right. That's why if they all live in the fanny pack Click. together, they're a unit. I just hung up on you, Dad. Hello? Yeah. You know what? You're boring. Why does it smell like broccoli in here, like a baked potato? Wait, Ben, did you put this in my pack? <laughs> yes. Well, I packed your lunch. Yeah, but you got to put foil around it or something, because now you got the sour cream all over my phone and my digital organizer. Well, next time. No, it's... Well, you'll try and do a nice thing for somebody, and then they... Well, you try and do a nice thing that cost me a few hundred dollars worth of uh, repair work. Well, why don't you just give me the fanny pack, and I'll hose it out, and we'll give it back no, to you. No, don't get it wet. That would be like pouring salt on an open... Don't pour that <laughs> salt, salt on... on your wound. You know how that expression started? How? Oh. Some guy poured some salt on an open wound. Liar! No, I'm serious. Shut up. It's not that easy. Oh, sure. But you know the expression, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater? That's good advice. How did that one start? Don't even ask. That's that's such a sad story. Hey, Dad. Yeah? Dad, I have a little uh, surprise for you. Oh, good. I love surprises. I know you do. Should I close my eyes? I think you should close your eyes and take off your fanny pack. No, I'll close my eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Okay. Turn your head to the right. Okay. And cover your mouth when you yawn. Oh, sorry. Now turn around. Yeah. Now open your eyes. Okay. Here we go. Wow, Ben. Yeah? It's beautiful. What yeah. is that exactly? It's a bag. It's a plastic bag. <laughs> You're not going to suffocate me, are you? No, no. Don't <laughs> worry about that yet. Now, what is that uh, for? This is for all your stuff. Do you give that to me? I'm going to give this to you. Do you know why? Why? Because I can't stand the fanny pack. And you think I'll do better walking around with a bag full yeah. of... You bring this to work. What about... Maybe you graduate to a regular gym bag or a backpack or a briefcase. No. Dad, you're a man. You think I'm going to walk to work carrying a plastic shopping bag? How come nobody walks around with that stick with the bandana on the back anymore? That I would do in a flash. You know? The hobo look? Yeah, yeah. that's a good look. Yeah. Go to work with your phone and your all your electronic devices. I wouldn't have to that. drive to work. I'd just hop a freight train. <laughs> exactly. we got to bring that back. <laughs> This is kind of strange doing this, sitting here. Well, well, it is an unnatural situation therapy. Kind of reminds me of the first time I ever got undressed in front of a woman. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. She started screaming, and uh, then they kicked me off the bus. Mm. When I was in high school, I, I got my girlfriend pregnant. Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't get her pregnant. I just really, really pressured her to adopt. That's different, but similar. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a restaurant the other night, ordered a huge meal I couldn't pay for. And, mm -hmm. and they yelled at me. They sent me in the kitchen to wash dishes. Right. I went in there. I broke 10 plates. Then I had to go back out and eat more food. Hmm. I went to a food fair. They had, they had food from colonial times. Right. Yeah, it was all stale. I'm sorry. I have to get that. That's my pants. Hello? Ben? No, I know I left the bag at home. No, I love the bag. No, this is, this is not a good time. No, listen, I cannot talk now. I'm with a patient. I'm not getting snippy. I'm not raising, I am not raising my voice. Well, look, I, this is, this is, this is not the time to do this, okay? I am not mad at you. No, I don't, I don't hate you. I am not. Okay. Love you too. Very much. Bye. <laughs> I think if we can find the source of your anger and then approach it from that angle, I think if you saw what it is that, that makes you so angry... I think it comes from this black rage that I have inside. 
I'm pretty sure. There's a big cloud of black. Well, you know, my job is to help you mm -hmm. shed light on the black. Let me ask you something. What, what do you do when you get angry? I think what's more important is why you're interested in what I do when I get angry. I'm just, I'm, uh, as an angry uh, person who likes to vent their anger, I'm, I'm interviewing people. I'm, let's say I'm writing a book. And let's say I'm writing a book. Okay. Called, It's Not Important What I Do When I'm Angry. Okay. All right, I'm writing a book called It Is Important What Dr. Katz Does When He's Angry by Dr. Dennis Leary, okay? Okay, I reviewed your book. Yes. And found it really not very insightful or helpful and referred the author of your book, in this case you, mm -hmm. to my book. Yeah. Well, I've reviewed your book, okay, already, without even reading it. And since you reviewed my book so badly, you know what I say? I think your book sucks. Oops, Dennis, you know what the music means. Quite frankly, no, I don't know what the music means. Well, it means we're going to have to stop. Thank mm -hmm. you.